Paul Nicoire Grimes at KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Nice meeting both of you. I really loved the movie. It is very stunning and very well made. I felt like I was the third guy on your mission and I realized I could never do this. Like it was <laughs> so intense. My body was clenched for two hours straight. What, did you guys go through any military boot camp at all to kind of learn what it was, what it would be like to be a veteran and a soldier? Yeah, we did. We did a lot of training. Um, we rehearsed for six months before we, before we made this film. Um, and, and then six months of rehearsals sort of involved, you know, training with a military advisor called Paul Biddis, who actually served in the British military. Um, and we do a lot of military drills and, you know, learning how to shoot with the rifles with the armoury team. Um, but really, a lot of it was to make it look like second nature. Right. Like we'd, we'd, we've been soldiers, not... You know, the, the whole thing of it was, you know, on the day of filming, we had so much to do and so much to think about, we didn't want to be worrying about how to reload the rifle. Yeah. It's very fingers and thumbs. The music, the score is incredible, and it drives so much of the second half of the movie. Did you get to hear any of it all to kind of get in your head what the, the mood, the tenor of that scene would be like? No, no. I think Thomas Newman's score is just stunning. Mm -hmm. like, and, that, and that, for me, was when we first watched it was one of the most amazing things is that uh, there was there was one scene in particular which I also sort of want to say where it falls in the script the, the music just takes on a life of its own and and for I was thinking about for what for, for my character in that scene I was thinking he's at like he's at the pits he's at the lowest of the low and the piece of music that they put on top of that to sort of offset the action was this courageous sort of sweeping beautiful orchestral music and it sort of it gave a completely different emotional sort of uh, results mm -hmm. and 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 tone to the one that I had in my head while doing, and that was just that was like when I was like, oh man, Sam really knows what he's doing there, <laughs> you know, and how to yeah. use all elements. You, I think, are in every scene of the movie, maybe not every frame, but you were in every scene. Is that more pressure? Do you did you feel that pressure to get everything correct? And I don't think there's um no, it didn't really feel it didn't feel that different to be honest. In in, in the way that the way that like we all made the film is that it was the most mutually collaborative experience we've ever had could because especially because how we shot it with a one take nature mm -hmm. there is no lead element you know there's there is there's just the story and there's just achieving encapsulating that story in the shot and so it was a constant mutual handoff between ourselves the 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 camera team the sound team the set and everything from day one was built we built it together and so I think even if we're the only ones that you see on the, the screen, other than you know the set mm. and, and, and you witness how the camera moves, but uh, I guess we're the, we're the faces that you see, um, it was, it was, there were so many more people involved in the, in the doing of each, mm -hmm. each moment. Colin Firth, Benedict Cumberbatch, both in it as well, for a little bit. What surprised you most about them? And did you get any kind of acting advice from either of them? Um, no, they, they, didn't give, they didn't give any advice. I, th I think the thing that I most enjoyed working, working with these people is that, you know, like when, when I read the script, you sort of imagine how they're going to do it. And they turned up and complete, it was completely different to how I imagined it. And they, they brought so much detail to, to their characters and, and pulled things out of the script that I never really picked up on. And their performances are just so natural and real. And, and they really do capture what it would have been like for a soldier in that time. And uh, like Andrew Scott, for instance, he, uh, you know, his character, Lieutenant Leslie, he looks like he's been there for, he looks like he's been there for years. Mm -hmm. And he looks bored, can't be bothered, mm -hmm. you know, he's sarcastic, he's funny. And, and, and just so much going on in their performances, they were, they were mind blowing to watch. It was. A grueling shoot. What do you guys do at the end of the day to just like unwind, get back to reality? It's, fu it's funny, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because it's like, without sounding doom and gloom, like I think everyone, was just really focused on doing the job. And like, and we had, genuinely, we had such a good time making it that, but it was knackering at the same time. So at the end of the night, you just kind of go home, crash out, look over your stuff for tomorrow. But I think if there was ever a really big day, you know, we, us two, we'd sort of, there'd usually be the, we, we, you know, we didn't have to say too much. It was like, do you want to get some food tonight? Get some food. <laughs> we'd have a meal, debrief, and that's, right. that was that. But yeah, yeah. yeah I think we were, we were all kind of happy to be in it. It was a very constant experience. Are there role models in your life that have sacrificed a lot that you look up to much like our veterans and the people in the military? Um, I look up to my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. um, I also had a great, great grandfather who fought in the war. Um, and you know, hearing his story, I wouldn't have, I didn't know before starting this film. So that, that's, that inspired me as well to, you know, it, it was, I look, up, I look up to everyone in my family, family. Yeah, 
yeah, I think family for me as well. They haven't gone through the literal physical hardships of, um, you know, the soldiers serving in, in, in war. But um, yeah, my dad probably, you know, and my mum, my sister as well, <laughs> frankly. Right. Yeah, family. Yeah. What did you learn from your grandfather from talking to him about serving, and how did that inspire you throughout this? Uh, well, well I, did, I didn't talk to him. He was he he, uh, he, he was my great great granddad, mm. and um, he I, I, I asked my mum and dad basically have we got any ancestors that mm. fought in the war, and they asked their mums and dads, and then my granddad, you know, asked around the family and came back and said, yeah, we had uh, you know my great great grandfather called David Henry Pierce. Um, he said he's in a book. I was like, what? What are you on about? What? He's like, he's got a diary entry in a book called The Western Front Diaries. So I bought the book, and it's a snippet. It's basically a collection of snippets of diary entries. And his diary entry was in there, and he talks about how he fought in the cavalry. Uh, he was out in no man's land one day and got shot and paralysed. Um, and he basically was bleeding out for four days in no man's land. Um, long story short, he survived the war and worked in the first poppy factory that opened in Richmond in London. And I didn't know that before starting this film, and I'm so glad, you know, that I've, I've you know, heard, found the story. I feel like we don't take enough time with our grandparents to then learn those stories and hear from them. It's yeah. I'm glad that this movie is kind of doing that. I hope to young people and inspiring us to learn more about World War One. Because I kind of sat in my car afterwards, like I don't really know a lot about that war. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of an ignored war. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it, I think it's 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 more of it's it's, it's a bigger thing in British culture. But mm -hmm. I think you're right. We've we've only just. I think if it's right in saying it was only just a few years out from the last veteran passing away. Mm. So I think this is, uh, we're now at the point where it will live on through stories and through the, the books that are there. And, you know, like Peter Jackson's Beautiful, They Shall Not Grow Old as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because it's, it's in danger of becoming sort of in human form out of touch. Well, thank you very much, you guys. I really appreciate it. It was a great conversation and a great thank movie you. too. And Cheers. I love sitting through it and kind of being a part of it. So thank you. Oh.